I am now. All right. Welcome back, guest. We have my good friend, Marie-Philippe Poulet. She doesn't need any introduction. I mean, she plays hockey, but she's an all-around incredible person. The star of Bose. I think that's worth mentioning. Uh, Poo, thank you for agreeing to do this. Uh, we know you're very hard to get, but thankfully, um, I saw you a couple nights ago, so I was able to really get your ass in gear <laughs> to schedule this. Um, how are you doing, Boo, in quarantine? Uh, pretty good. Obviously, it hasn't been that easy uh, since March when uh, everything kind of happened and shut down. I think uh, it was kind of a little step back with everything, like in individual women's hockey, just everything in general. But I mean, I think you, you I got to start learning different things uh, about myself, about what I, I love to do outside of hockey. Obviously, uh, not being able to play hockey, it's hard, but I think you, you learn different things. You, and I learned how to take care of my body, learn different workouts, and uh, it's been fun. It's been challenging a little bit, but I think you learn to take care of yourself a little bit more and you realize what's important in your life. And I think that's yeah. something that we really value over COVID, even though it's a tough time for everybody. I think just taking the, the, the phone and trying to call your, your loved one, your, your family, your friends, I think it's super important. Yeah, it goes such a long way. And so you, you mentioned workouts, and that's something that we kind of uh, want to talk to you about. We ask a lot of the athletes that come on the podcast a little bit about their day to day you know, what does their training regimen look like? So, I mean, what kind of workouts have you been doing? You know, can you give us a little uh, glimpse of what it looks like to, to be day to day in your, in your training? Uh, right now, obviously, like we we're lucky the stadium, the Olympic Stadium is open. So we have the chance to, to train there. We have a great group here in Montreal. We're about 14, 15 of the national team that we're able to train every day together. So it's been great, but just getting there every day, five times a week. Uh, just getting a workout in, obviously. With COVID, I had uh, the chance to buy a couple of weights, a couple of kettlebell here. So my second room, it's pretty much a gym with the bike back <laughs> here. So just trying different things over the last couple of months. But having the stadium close to, to where I live, I think it's been nice to, to work out there. And obviously, it's just normal workouts. Uh, we just had the chance to do our fitness testing last week, but now it's back in season time. But I don't know when the <laughs> season starts. So we'll see what's going to happen. Well, that's it, right? Because you don't know when the season's going to start. So I, I was curious, you know, like, has it been tough to, you know, keep motivated because a lot of the tournaments and the championships have been canceled and there's just so much uncertainty moving forward. So, you know, is it easy for you to just, you know, you're an athlete, it's part of your day to day to just work out or, you know, is there part of you that's like, man, this is hard. Like, you don't know when the next championship or tournament's going to come. Well, I, I love training. I love uh, pushing myself uh, to get better every day, but it, not going to lie, it is hard. Sometimes waking up in the morning when you're tired, it's like, why am I doing this? Like, when is the <laughs> team? When is the big, big, yeah. big, big thing? So obviously it is hard. Like, uh, I would be lying if I said it was not, but I think it's just, uh, it's just very, just a matter of like, why you're doing it. And I think waking up in that morning when I know, I still love doing it. I still love pushing myself and I still love playing hockey. I think that's just easy for me to, to, to get there and, fi and find that motivation. But like I said, we have such a great group in Montreal. Like we're so lucky to get back on the ice, uh, that big group uh, with the Canadian, the Montreal group here. And I mean, it's just been tough to not be able to do that. We, we get to the rink, we see each other for about five seconds off the ice, we jump on that ice, you, you practice and then you're off the ice right away. So it's been hard in that sense, but I think having those people around you, I think makes so much of, such a difference when you have great people to, to be able to work out and do what you love the most. Yeah, community definitely helps. Um, and I, I admire your drive. <laughs> you worked out this morning, I had some coffee, that's about it, <laughs> set up on the couch, but yeah, having a group is 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 kind of the big difference for me. Like me not being on a national program, now I'm like working out alone in my living room. I'm like, oh, I miss just people pushing me. I was working out with two teammates, uh, Sarah Laforte, Kevin Mall, but gyms are closed except for the Olympic athletes, which I think is totally fair. Um, I have a question for you. You know, you've been to three Olympics now. This was leading up to your fourth excluding COVID, because obviously this is a very particular situation. How do you kind of prepare for your first Olympics versus your third, fourth? Like, is your training mentality the same or 
um, has differed in any sense. You know, you're in a senior position, people look up to you, the younger groups push up to you. You definitely have a bigger leadership role, but personally, when you focus on your game, how is it different? Your question, obviously, like, I remember my first Olympic, 18 years old, I think you, you just go with it. I feel you don't overthink and they give you one thing, like your body can take anything you want. Uh, you're on the ice, you, you don't overthink and like, it's okay to make mistakes. Like, you know, you're just fresh and you, it, it's fun. And I'm not saying that I don't think like that now, but just taking care of my body a little bit more. I think as you get older, I think that having a different training obviously i i don't like taking days off and i know i should be taking days off to if i want to keep playing as long as i want and even on the ice it's just trying to tweak little things obviously sometimes like now the, the girls like it's so fast and getting so good and you see the young ones coming up and it's like whoa okay what do i need to do here so just like obviously watching videos seeing little things to tweak your game and just for example like a uh, change your angle of a shot i think it's so huge and i think uh people like forget that but just tweaking little things and just not overthinking it like having fun remembering that it's a like I started playing it was the game and still is and obviously like I, I'm lucky enough to do that as a, a job I'm part of the Olympic um, team but it, it's just been nice to see like also everybody like growing up has also like you see young ones coming up and I was back there at 18 years old where I was like looking up to the Caroline to the Charlie to the Jaina Hefford and now it's like you're part of one of the leader and it's like you want to help those young ones to be able to grow up as a player and as a person as well. It must go by so fast and I, I bet all those young players are looking up to you now too. Um, moving on to the PWHPA obviously big news came in uh, signing a deal with Secret uh, the deodorant company for a sponsorship deal worth $1 million. This is kind of a question for you, Mackie, but also for you, Mel, like, what do you, what are your thoughts? I mean, this is a pretty monumental deal for the PWHPA and just women's hockey as a whole. Yes. I think that's super exciting. Obviously like right now, especially with COVID happening, uh, I think we had a little setback with where we were at with our PWHPA association. So having a, a big company like that, still believing in women's sports and women's hockey. I think it's huge for all of us and hopefully we'll be able to get back with that tour and get something together to, to be able to generate that league that we want. I think obviously right now, like I said, it's tough in that moment, but we really believe in our product. Like we're, we're, we're passionate what we're doing. And I think obviously right now with, with having a secret behind us, we're going to be able to generate even more companies to be able to, to help us out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I was saying that, the other day like a it's it's so important that we have that backing and um you know it boosts us to like knowing that companies are willing to invest in us because we invest in each other and ourselves every day and it's it's nice to see companies kind of match that and what i'm hoping for is that other companies and other investors are gonna kind of be inspired by secret and, and maybe invest as well they're gonna see well why is this company investing they must see something and and then they'll get to know us and they'll maybe read into to kind of the women's hockey situation in North America and see that it is lacking a lot of support and see the potential in it. So I'm really optimistic and for them to, to make it, especially right now during a pandemic, like I think it, it speaks volumes to their dedication to us. So I'm really excited about it. But yeah, who? I hopefully we could get something going. Like sure. who knows? I mean, probably would be summer at this point, <laughs> or yeah. or fall. We we realistically we don't know, and we would only want to do something when when it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. But let's hope we could get on the ice together as a group again, because we only had like three, four practices. <laughs> and it, it wasn't enough. <laughs> so sad. Oh. And I mean, if we got to keep playing each other, we're going to kill each other eventually. But I kind of <laughs> like, like that competitiveness, like already game one, like team, team red and blue. We're like, <laughs> <getting> <laughs> it's, what's funny about Montreal, I feel we have such a big group here that obviously like right now in these difficult time, we have the chance of, we have the chance to play two inter squad games. So like yeah. we have the chance to play against each other, like, and that's great. But like you said, like, uh, we might kill each other soon. It was on the game, so hopefully we're gonna get something uh, going soon. Yeah, Pooh, our team wasn't doing so hot. Uh -huh. I know, I know. <laughs> don't, don't bring it up now. <laughs> I hate losing. I just practice. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> but uh, moving on, Pooh, I don't know 
personally much about like your early hockey days. I know you played for the Montreal Stars when you were like 16. Um, for people who don't know, the Stars were pre Les Canadiens, but essentially uh, same team. And, you know, when I joined Les Canadiens, it's basically post-college athletes, you know, it provided a home for those athletes, but you went before you went to college, you know, as a 16 year old. So um, why did you do that? And, you know, what, was that unusual? Like, I know Roger, like, Rougeau also did the same thing, but um, I guess what drew you there and how did that happen? You know, a girl from Bose going to Montreal? <laughs> well, I started, it was, a, I played midget this far with guys. It was my last year with guys and I didn't know what I was going to play in grade 10. So, uh, so I'm like, yeah, so last night, I didn't know where I was going to play. So mm-hmm. was that grade 10? Or 11? Grade 11. Grade 11. Yeah. So I had to make a decision. I was either staying back home and just practice for the midget team where I was just going to not really play games. And I tried a midget AAA uh, camp. And I think it just like really opened my eyes. Like I just got rocked every, every uh, game at the training camp. And my parents were so nervous in the, in the stand. So I was just like, I think it's over uh, with guys. So I had to make a decision. I, I, and I contacted in Montreal with Amy Doyle and just – I didn't know I was going to play. And the option to, to come to Montreal was there to play with um, Montreal Stars, which I was going to go to Cooper Academy for a year in an English school. I live at the Lauriane Rougeau's house for two years as a billet family. So all of it came up together and happened very quick. Like in, I did two school in, in both where I just did one, one day and then all of a sudden I was gone to Montreal. My friend drove me to Rougeau and here I was a little French girl in the West Island and it was just very, very difficult, uh, the English part. But I was so lucky, like I had the Kelly Sudia, the Brit Privé, uh, Lisa Marie Breton that really took me under their wings and taught me a lot. Um, but it was just amazing. It was just a learning experience. Obviously, I was lucky enough to play with the same thing as Kim St. Pierre and all those girls. And to be honest, like, it was a shock when I came with the Les Stars. Obviously, we would travel to Toronto with a van where we rent and we'd be about eight of them, eight of us in the van with the pop <laughs> bag in the back with Leslie. It was just like, wow, it was just a change. But you know what? I made it through. And I think that was a really turning point as a person as well. I was just learning so much from this, these uh, old, um, old ladies there that took care of me. And uh, it, it was fun, to be honest. Like, that's how it happened that year. And after that, I played a year at Dawson, and it was the Olympics in Vancouver after. But it really happened quick, and, but it, it was really a fun year. That's incredible. I mean, and, and those girls, Kelly Studio, are still taking care of us. Like, <laughs> the, it's, it's unbelievable. They're the true champion. Yeah. of like women's hockey in Montreal like those women are so passionate about the sport and I mean they were like significantly older than you at that time so I'm pretty sure you learned a lot of things from them yeah, I sure did <laughs> <laughs> but that's excellent but also kind of sad you know it speaks that there was not the level of hockey for women you know in your town and you had to go all the way to Montreal and play on essentially kind of like a senior league at that point to to find hockey has it changed at all in both I don't know Boo, is it is it uh, there's more girls now playing hockey obviously but it's still like it's a one team that like brings a lot of region together oh, like yeah. all the little cities but it, it's growing but I wish it was growing a little bit faster for sure. yeah it's a start it's a start at least I mean even me like I lived in the Niagara region um it's kind of big but to play at the level I want to play I played like junior league and um Ontario I had to go all the way to Stony Creek which was like an hour ride so like even for me it's like there was there was hockey it's just like it wasn't it wasn't like hard enough not no offense it's just like damn yeah. <laughs> and then the boys like my D partner my last year playing boys I think was like six one and I was like four <laughs> four eight <laughs> 90 pounds <laughs> and my mom was like oh my god she's I gonna don't... die out there <laughs> It's like when you start playing, like, scared. That's what happened, like, when I went to the midget triple camp. That I, w- I knew I was done. Like, you know, when you're, like, you're looking everywhere before getting the puck, it's, like, yeah, the position there. And it's, like, not our fault. Like, I couldn't put that on any weight at that age. Like, like there was just, you know, physiologically, I wasn't going to – I wasn't going to grow to six foot, 200 pounds at <laughs> – 
whatever, 15. <laughs> <laughs> So Pooh, after Dawson, um, you know, you, you played at Boston College, and I read this on Wikipedia. No, and I don't know. no, no, not Boston College. Don't get confused. Oh, Boston now. University. Oh, my God. <laughs> BU, yes. BU, you have to be you. <laughs> Can't fuck up that rivalry. That's funny. Okay. So, so I read on Wikipedia. Tell me if this is true. It says you tied uh, the single season shorthanded goal record in just like four games. And this was like your freshman year and it was like by like mid-October. Is that true? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know That's I actually think. wild. You just show up and you just like tie a record within four games. Like I'm like, what the fuck? Um, I, was, I was playing with pretty good players. Like, with the, uh, I was pretty lucky. Yeah, but shorthanded. I don't know. Did you have like an extra long stick or something? <laughs> just yeah. breaking up passes? <laughs> Go-go gadget. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> you <man. laughs> awesome. Um, but who? Why did you choose not to be confused with Boston College? Why did you choose BU? Um, I'm sure everyone was recruiting you at that time. So, what drew you to Boston and that university? Well, after Dawson, like I feel it happened very quick. Like I was uh, lucky enough to get centralized in Calgary, and I knew after I don't know what I was going to do, but I had a lot of calls from universities and during centralization, obviously I didn't have the chance to go for visits. So like I would get phone calls, but I was so young, like, I was like, I don't know. I can't, I can't say I was so young because now the kids get called at like 14 or 13. So yeah. I can't do it too long, but which is which just was, weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just so lost, I guess. Like I didn't know what to do. I was so focused on trying to make the team and I was just like getting phone calls like, okay, like I'll call you next weekend. But like I would just not follow through and then after the Olympics I was like oh okay <laughs> should I need to pick one I was like, <laughs> just like it's coming up uh, fast so I had a couple I had a visit at North Dakota Wisconsin and I went to uh, Boston University and when I went to BU I went with uh, Catherine Warren one of my uh, best friend here so she was doing an MBA there so um, I knew she was gonna go there so I went there and I don't know I just fell in love with the campus I feel like the water was kind of a my calm side from where I come from like just yeah. my peaceful side and the city which was right there and I don't know like obviously I was debating with, with uh, uh, between Wisconsin and BU and Wisconsin is super beautiful like great coaches great people but it was a little bit too big for me at that point and I don't know I just decided to go to BU and I know there was like a couple of girls that I knew there that that was going and it was closer to home like five six hour drive so yeah. all of it together made it pretty special and I was like you know to to live with Louise Warren like my first year with she became one of my good friends as well so I don't know all of it together was uh, a great decision all around. Was yeah, the culture I mean, shock like was it you know did you adapt pretty quickly or was it you know you're in the United States it's still different when you cross the border? It, it was different obviously that you need to adapt yourself obviously yeah. like I was from a year from just playing hockey into an hour like okay freshman and I need to figure it out here <laughs> well, fresh girl in Boston I need to to uh to work here so it, it was an adjustment but I like I had a great like support system around us and people were really great mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be a turnaround after Olympic year. <laughs> but I, I think people, because people ask like recruiting, recruiting questions a lot and like, how did you choose your school and stuff? And I had the same experiences as you, Pooh. Like, I'm like, you just have to go and you'll just kind of like, no. I'm like, you'll just know. You'll show up to a campus. Either you have friends that go there and they had a great time or me too. I chose St. Lawrence because it's like kind of close to home. My parents could come. But I was like, I don't know, I walked into Appleton Arena and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna score a couple goals here, block a few <laughs> shots. So where's the where's the pay meter? <laughs> it's hard to when parents ask you like what like what would like they ask question, but it's like it's I want them to make that decision. Like obviously like you have friends that go to one school, but you can't follow necessarily your friends because that's something she's gonna like. That's something you got totally different that you're gonna like. So that's yeah. something that for, for kids to know. It's like you gotta go your own path and it doesn't matter, like obviously if your best friend goes somewhere else. If you guys are really best friend, you guys are gonna come up after four years and still be it. Like, you know, it's like all of us, like we all went our separate ways yeah. and come back in Montreal and it's like nothing has changed. But it's like follow your path because everyone has a different path and you're just gonna make it your own yeah follow your heart like yeah. it's, it's cheesy but <laughs> it is i know <laughs> it is the truth and i think that's why it's a cliche i'm curious mm -hmm. when you you know like every freshman if they live in a dorm 
uh, or around the university. They kind of like have those those typical experiences where they're like either learning how to cook or learning how to clean for the first time or you know what I mean do you remember any of those first experiences or like you know were, were you generally just like okay I got this you know like um, when it comes well I think I really learned during the centralization with I was living with Caro, Shali and Kim and trust me like I learned a lot that year <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe I was living with them because like my I remember my first dinner like I was like sitting at the table with my idols where I watched in 2002 on TV. Like I was so nervous. I had like sweat pit, like <laughs> so big. And I was just sitting there and I ate so fast. And I was like, uh, I was like, can I have a second plate? And they looked at me like, really? You're going to ask us that every meal here? We're six months here together. Like <laughs> make yourself at home. But like, it was just like so funny because like, <laughs> They really taught me a lot. That was, I think, the year that I learned the most. And then moving to BU, I think it was kind of a, just a follow-up. Like, okay. obviously, you're always by myself with my roommate. And you learn a lot. You, I think the cleaning part is huge, that's for mm -hmm. sure. And <laughs> um, But, I mean, food-wise, uh, freshman year, you get a, a card and you sweat as much as you want. So <laughs> that's when the freshman 15 happened. So, obviously, it was uh, a little too easy to eat, but it, it was fun. Yeah. And you end up adjusting in the end. Um, yeah. So switching gears, uh, this is something that Mel and I were discussing before the podcast. Uh, you know, obviously, the media is always after you. They always ask you a bunch of questions. And a lot of them tend to be the same, especially from the mainstream media. Okay. So I'm wondering, like, especially as like someone who was PR for the Canada Zen and whatever, and I would see these questions happening um, and being asked to you, like, is there a question that you're just sick of being asked? And is there maybe another topic or a set of questions that you're like, talk to me about this instead, you know, or even when you hear your teammates being asked certain questions, you're like, seriously, come on, like, let's, let's move on and talk about something else, you know? Uh, great question. Um, well, I think like, if I think quit, I think like when you, you after a game or during the game, it's like, what happened on that goal? It's like, <laughs> You watched. <laughs> I think pretty much you can just rewind and watch it. Like you know, like I'm not too sure what to say. Like the play happened and we scored, or like you know, it's like just yeah. it's like you you were there, you saw it. Um, but obviously, like those questions are funny sometimes, especially like. But I remember one question that it made me. It was after 2018, and obviously, like after the final, and we lost, and. It got me like so rattled. It was just like after the game, like you you just lost, and like I got asked, "Were you injured?" Like you know, saying that pretty much you were a little slow or you were struggling. Like you know, it's like uh, right. no, I was not. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was completely <laughs> healthy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like I laugh about it now, but I was not so happy for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that is kind of like a little bit of a stab. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they. Uh, I think sometimes certain members uh, lack some tact. Let's let's say that. <laughs> um, so okay, so then obviously, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of media uh, members they'll want to talk to you all the time, and and that's the same with a couple of players either on the national team and even on the American team as well. But are there any other players that are on either Team Canada? or just in the PWHPA, part of Le Canadien, if you will, um, that you're like, you know what, the media needs to pay more attention to them or go talk to them because these are voices that we don't hear very often, but you know what, they have a lot to say and a lot to contribute to the conversation. I think there's a lot. I think, uh, like even in Montreal, like it doesn't matter if you're a national team or not. I think mm -hmm. a lot of us have a voice and I feel everybody has a voice that has power. And I think that's something yeah. that people need to remember. And like, I'm lucky enough that, like, I'm one of them, but, like, the Mel, the, the Karel, the Anso, the Jill, the Clarky, the Laura Stacey, the Raj, like, those are all, like, girls that, like, needs to be heard because they mm -hmm. all have a voice, and I think that's huge. And, I mean, I hope, like, people are going to see that, that not only, like, the national team player has a voice, but all of us with the PWHPA that can mm -hmm. say something and it's going to be heard. All right, just got to say time out quickly because Zoom is telling me I need to upgrade <laughs> this meeting <laughs> after 40 minutes. <laughs> Give me one second. Upgrade.
Uh, okay, it's telling me to buy it now. Um, so if it's okay with you guys, do you mind if I just stop this recording and send another invitation? So that way we don't have to like, so that way it doesn't cut abruptly because otherwise I have to pay to like have an extra 10 minutes. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to end this one and then I'm just going to send another invite. Talk to you soon. Okay. So like I said, a lot of the attention tends to be on you, but, um, and I know that you're not the biggest fan of talking about yourself. And I, I admire that about you. Cause I think there are certain people who like to talk about themselves a little too much. And I think that you're, you're the fact that you're so humble is, is a great quality. So I wanted to give you the opportunity. Um, you know, is there anyone in your life? It could be a friend, maybe a family member or someone you met, uh, in a professional setting, or maybe you met them once that, has had an impact on you and, you know, you want to give them a little bit of a shout out, give them some recognition, um, you know, and, and that people don't really know about. You have a lot of time here because a lot of people, uh, <laughs> um, well, there's a lot, but um, I think my brother, I think like, obviously I'm pretty like, lucky to have so many people in my support system, but my brother, I think that's someone that, I really value like he's always there he's gonna send me videos uh, of hockey all the time he's gonna want to talk about hockey but just like the I don't know he just taught me a lot like through it all I think he always had my back uh, since day one and that's something that I'm so thankful and obviously like with my career like I feel sometimes we tend to forget people, but my brother and my family, those are the ones that really uh, built me from the ground up and they're still there be behind me and support me. And that's someone that I'm really thankful. That's awesome. And like, I have one brother too, Poo, and I feel like that they're your first best friend, you know, right, I feel yeah. like you kind of had similar upbringings from what I know, like, you know, they're the ones you're really street hockey with, like, they're the ones kind of beating you up playing mini sticks in the basement, <laughs> like, that's your first kind of ride or die, and I think as you get older, you, you kind of realize how much they mean to you, I mean, in, on, like, a deeper level than just, like, you're my, my blood and my, you know, I love you, and, but you also build me up to be a, who I am. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, who since it's quarantine and I've been following you on Instagram and I know you. So what are the kind of hobbies you've picked up over the quarantine? Um, I saw you made candles. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sure> <laughs> <I got. laughs> no, what else? Like, what other fun things have you done? Uh, yeah, the candle was fun. It, it took a long time <laughs> more than I thought, but that was very fun. Not really smelly. We still got a little figured out here, but it, it was fun. It was a great activity. We did a pumpkin too. We okay. carved a pumpkin, a uh, couple of puzzles, a um, couple of TV shows, obviously. Um, but reading a little bit too, I think it's something All that right. I did a little bit. And just different things, to be honest. I think uh, COVID, a uh, lot of walks outside, of uh, <laughs> walking outside, and a lot of like little FaceTime with your, your friends and family. I think I'm not the, the most um, talkative, but I think that's something I've done a little bit more than usual. <laughs> How do you make a candle? Like, what do you do? Does it take a long time? <laughs> you go to Michael's and you okay. search for a box that has everything <laughs> on it. Just the wax. You got to melt the wax. You got to put a little scent in there. And All right. <laughs> everything. Just, but it's fun. That's fun. I think, I think. Oh, cooking. Cooking. Is funny. Oh, cooking. Yeah. Cooking? Oh, cooking? Yeah. Well, okay. What's your favorite meal? Or one that you feel like confident that if I were to come over for dinner, you would serve me? Ah, uh, nice little ribs. Oh, so good. In the oven or do you have a barbecue? In the oven. We have a yeah. little charcoal barbecue, but the, in the oven. They're pretty good, I would say. Oh, okay. Well, you have to give me the recipe. Yeah. Maybe when it's over, you can come over, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. Who knows when that is? Oh, my God. <laughs> we did get to meet outside, which was nice, you know, because I hadn't seen you in a while, so it was nice mm -hmm. to have a little picnic outside, but it got dark so fast. We got together, I guess it was Friday night. Mm -hmm. It felt like it was 10 p.m. It was like 7, but it was pitch black. It gets dark so fast, and like within like a 15-minute span, the sun's out, and then you just like 10 minutes later, you're like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's tough. All right, Pooh, we want to finish on a story okay it's like one of my favorite stories because I now share something with you 
and it's quite <laughs> permanent. You and I have matching tattoos, okay? Mm -hmm. And it sounds it sounds ridiculous, and I think the story is even more. <laughs> <laughs> so, who do you want to start off with your morning before we got tattoos? How yeah. did it go? <laughs> How did it go? Well, it was a great morning. We're actually going for brunch uh, the, with you, Ambrose, Jesse, and Russo, and it was super exciting. A nice little breakfast all together on this Saturday morning, and then we get a phone call from uh, Gina Kingsbury, our GM with Hockey Canada, saying that the World Championship is canceled due to COVID. So obviously. It was a very, very tough news, to be honest. I think all of us were really shocked, uh, especially it was the first thing that was canceled. So we're like, why is this happening? But obviously, yeah. thinking of it back, you realize that bigger things happen after that. But it was a tough morning, but we still made it fun. We had a couple of mimosas and enjoyed the morning. <laughs> it was a good way morning. to do it. <laughs> and I, I think the like topper to that, it was like, worlds being canceled, of course, it was a pandemic, but at the time we didn't really know the severity of it, but it was just like another knock, you know, that, you know, the 12 months prior, we had lost our league. Uh, there was not like a, um, uh, what was the, the other turn in the last candle? The four, four nations was canceled. Mm -hmm. So there was no international play there. You know, dream got tour was going, but you know, it was a year that was very uncertain and then world so good just like women's hockey was getting knocked over and over again and obviously it turned out to be a severe pandemic so it's okay but it led to quite an epic day um after brunch we went for uh, a walk around montreal jesse had like never explored montreal so we took her to like the bagel shop the best coffee etc and then suddenly was it Aaron? I think it was Aaron and Jesse wanted to get tattoos. Okay. Right now, <laughs> the fact we're getting tattoos after like devastating news, <laughs> probably not like a smart idea. But Jesse had been wanting this tattoo for some time. So it actually made sense for her because she was going to be able to heal after. So we find a tattoo parlor. Pooh and I are just like support. shooting the shit. Or support, yeah. Support, <laughs> you know? Yeah, we're there for support. We're just shooting the shit, talking, and Jesse's getting her tattoo. Aaron was going to get hers, and we're talking with this other um, tattoo artist. And I don't know if people have seen the episode of Friends where Phoebe and Rachel go to get tattoos, um, but essentially <laughs> they go into separate rooms, and then Phoebe comes out with just like a blue dot, okay? And Rachel's pissed. She's like, what is that? Essentially, Phoebe got scared, so she only got like one blue dot. And so Pooh and I are talking about that, laughing. And I don't, I don't remember. Do you remember? Like, was he the one that suggested it, the tattoo artist? Or well, I think you mentioned it. It's like, imagine, like, a blue <laughs> dot. Like, you, have you watched Friends and you got into it? And then the guy was like, you want one? And I think it just like you're like, yes. <laughs> no, like, he's like, that's a really good cool. male impression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was like, you, you want a blue dot? But I was like, I'm not going to pay 80 bucks for a blue dot. But then he was like, <laughs> he was like, I'll just give it to you for free. And I was like, why not? It's a nice <laughs> blue dot. And at first, you were like, you were shooketh. You were like, you're not going to get this right now. <laughs> okay, what changed your mind? So essentially, I ended up getting a tiny blue dot, like right here on my shoulder. Like, it's like a freckle size, not even, but it's like pretty bright blue. Anyways, then Pooh, I don't know how you changed your mind. Like what was going well, on? You look pretty cool. And I was just like, you know what? We live once, you know, and I don't know. It was a fun idea too, the way you said it. The world, if you see the world from far, <laughs> far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I'm getting it too. So I got it right here. <laughs> so Pooh and I have matching tattoos here and on our elbow. And uh, it's probably the greatest achievement of 20, what was that? 20, was that, that was 2020. That was 2020. And it's oh still God, 2020. It's <laughs> <laughs> still 2020. Um, Anyways, maybe I'll share on our Instagram my little tattoo. But <laughs> it is the world that's seen from a great, great distance. <laughs> I like it. It gives perspective. You're very right. deep. <laughs> right? 
there's a virus and this is the planet just trying to get through it (laughs) (laughs) all right well i think that basically wraps it up i mean that was a great note to end on i love that story so so much thank you both for sharing it um but yeah mahi thank you so much for coming on the podcast so it was a lot of fun. It was great to catch up. And, uh, great. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. It was, also, awesome. it was a fun interview, you know? It was yeah. very fun. I'm not going to ask you, were you injured? I can't believe someone asked you that. It's a terrible question. Seriously? <laughs> like, oh, God. It's like, interesting. But, Pooh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I hope we get to have dinner in a house sometime soon and to hang out. But keep mm-hmm. plugging away. Hopefully we'll get on the ice together in the next couple of months. Let's cross our fingers. Thank Thank you for the secret cup or the or the diva cup. I want it to be called the diva cup. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we we had a a a friend of ours, Courtney Cito, (laughs) message us after the secret. She's like, "Oh my god, they had such a good opportunity to call it the diva cup." (laughs) That's so good. Like, yes, that would sell perfectly well. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you guys so much.